Hi, welcome to Cycle in Vancouver. My name is Steve, and this is Ride 26. Today is Monday, April 27, 2020. I started this ride around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The temperature is around 16 degrees Celsius. As you can see, it is a very gray, overcast day. It's a typical April day in Vancouver. As I was riding along Beach Avenue by Denman, I ran into this noisy group. As I later learned, this was the end of an anti-COVID-19 lockdown protest. They sure were a lot of cameras. This lockdown sure has made it nice for cyclists. The city has closed off Stanley Park Drive and a couple of lanes of Beach Avenue to vehicles. And with many office workers now working from home, there is so much less traffic throughout the city. For this ride, I intended to ride east to Burnaby and to take on Curtis Hill once again. The cherry blossom trees lining the hill on Union Street were out in force. I just wish the sun was out. That would have been glorious.
so listen DJ Heard about DJ, talk about DJ Respect some DJ, no rate some DJ Call some DJ, can't even DJ Hear all them DJ, beware all them DJ Look like some of them, no care all them DJ All them say my DJ, and them a fly DJ Get your priorities right DJ As a real musician All me need is a microphone in a million young Let me teach the nation a bongo chili aka Clayton yo As a real musician All me need is a microphone need a million yo Make me this a nation Get me find out send up and them a pray to Satan Open on a year me turn on a list now So I intended to stop at the top of Curtis Hill and then return home But that isn't quite what happened Even though I stopped several times on the way for rest, I was feeling quite good at the top of the hill and, after another short rest, debated whether to continue up Burnaby Mountain to Simon Fraser University. Now, as we all know, in this world, everything seems to be socially constructed. And as a 55-year-old guy, I know all I need to regain my 20-year-old form is confidence. And at that moment, I confidently thought that I'd be able to complete the rest of the climb. I confidently set off like Basil Fawlty hanging a moose's head on the wall. Or, if you like a better example, I felt like Ellis from that great Christmas movie Die Hard. I had the confidence of a man who negotiated million dollar deals for breakfast. I got partway up Burnaby Mountain Parkway and then remembered how the road deceptively turned to the left. That meant the climb was much longer than it looked from the bottom. So I confidently stared at the road and suffered, but I eventually made it to the intersection with the Gaudi Way, where I reacquainted myself with the guardrail resting spot. There are two approaches to the top from here. Either go straight or turn left. SFU was originally inspired by the Parthenon atop the Acropolis. The main entrance was constructed such that as you come out of the forest, the university reveals itself atop the mountain. That effect was much better long ago before all the added construction, but that is the approach I always take. My confidence let me down. Now I have completed the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu twice. I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and I have ridden several Grand Fondos so I knew physical suffering and how much I could withstand. On this day, I got crushed. Those two gentlemen walking down the hill will actually make it to the top before I do. I literally collapsed. I was absolutely done at this point and had no choice but to sit on the fence rail and hope for recovery. I sat on that rail for probably 10 minutes as the two gentlemen walked by and as another cyclist went past. 
I somehow had an Arthur Putty moment and determined that I was not a mouse. So I mounted the bike and slowly started to creep up the hill. It's a cold twist and fat Pilgrimage of a catalytic heart and mat For God's crack, God's God goodbye I, bloody in the garment of a ghost in the sack Make a damn sure the body doesn't have I eventually caught up to that cyclist and passed him, and then got to my favorite spot for a well-deserved rest and snack. to take the quick downhill route home. I was really tired and not thinking straight, though I did manage to see the gravel in the bike lane. I was so tired and instead of crossing the parkway at the first traffic light, I sailed on past it. I then passed the second crossing area before I realized what I had done and cringed at the thought that I might have to ride back up the hill. It all worked out, however, and I found my way back home. Oh, 
heights to stand in Who did the one that let me go? But she's not me, so I drink a lot of beer To show it all, show it all away I see how she feels Want to give her a kiss But she's not here So I drink another beer To show it all, to show it all away Another hug, yes But she's not here So I drink another beer To show it all Show it all away But she's not here really So I drink another beer To show it all To show it all away It is somewhat funny though that after all that, I decided to climb Smythe Street west across Vancouver when I could have taken an easier and flatter route instead. So what did I learn from this ride? I learned that there is a fine line between confidence and hubris, and I suffered badly for it. Although my conditioning and climbing were getting better, I pushed myself so close to the wall on that climb that I have never fully recovered from it. On a couple of occasions, I planned to take on that ride again, but never did. I would change routes at the last moment or convince myself I was too busy to go cycling that day. I have since completed harder rides, but I have not returned to take on SFU, even though I know that my conditioning is much better than it was on this day. I will be back in 2021 to try this route again.